she is basically now arguing within that premise free will determinism he's everything he said might be true but when you keep bringing yourself up i'm the average weight for like women in america so Today, we will be looking at, is being fat a choice? I'm going to attempt to do this video in a way that we kind of break down the ideas and the points of view of the people who are on this show, this middle ground, this jubilee middle ground. Uh, and we're going to look at the philosophy of how they most likely got to these conclusions that they are espousing. Now, I'm not a trained philosopher. So there won't be many big words in this video. So if you like big words, I apologize. Um, if you are a trained philosopher, we would love to see you down in the comment section to try to explain away some of these ideas. Without any further ado, is being fat a choice? Yeah. <laughs> People who are telling people go out and get fat versus a Lizzo who's so saying fat. accept me yeah. the way I am. She's not just saying accept me the way I am. She's dressing extremely scantily clad and then saying if you don't think that it's normal for a morbidly obese person to be wearing a G-string in the middle of public, then you're the problem. Okay, did that actually happen though? Like she just said Lizzo has... You know what, I don't want to even... We're not even going to go there. I don't, I don't want to even risk. I don't want to even risk that. Let's continue. Sometimes when people are debating, they'll throw out like these scenarios, but they won't clarify whether or not they're real or if they just made them up. So I'm hoping she made that up. But if that's real, then that's highly disturbing. Being fat or skinny is a choice. Agreeers. Agreeers. Of course. I can tell the lady with the cane. She's going to be a problem. She's going to have some strong opinions. Not every factor is purely choice. Um, I don't think that every factor is. Dominic. I think a majority of it is. In most cases, for most people, being skinny or being fat um, is about willpower. It's about um, the environment you grow up in, sure, but who you choose to associate with, what sort of things you choose to listen to, who you choose to kind of have as your friends around you and support you, all of those things are choices that you can make that will lead you closer towards being one or the other. I know. With such a good perspective, I'm surprised he's a little big. Uh, he has a very nuanced perspective on this. So he's basically saying, I think if we were to pare this down, he's he's kind of internally trying to free will determinism. He's trying to see like where where how do you strike a balance between those two things? Because what he said is entirely true. Like when you grow up, and one of the saddest things I see on a regular basis, every single time I go to Walmart, is you see these children who are parents who are overweight, and the kids are overweight. And to some extent, it's it to almost, well, I'd say entirely, it's not the kid's fault, right? It's not, the kid isn't making a decision to be overweight. He just so happens or she just so happens to be in an environment that is highly conducive to allowing them to be overweight or to like developing obesity. So I think what he's saying is, is he has a really nuanced perspective. He's saying... If you were to simplify his argument, I think you would get, if you find yourself in a, in a scenario where you just so happen to be overweight and you develop a consciousness of the fact that, oh, I'm, I'm overweight, it might not be your fault that you ended up in that position, but if your goal is to then change that or you don't like the fact that you're overweight, there are things that you can do actively to try to reverse it. And I think that's a healthy perspective. I know I'm kind of filling in the gaps there a little bit, and I think he put it very nicely, but I think that's what he's getting at. And I think that's a really good perspective. What I do with my body, 
I know what I put into it day in and day out. I choose not to eat some days. Um, I choose, you know, how I want to look. And I don't fault anyone for how they want to look or how they want to be. But I think it's a choice at the end of the day. I'm very, you know, always wish-washy on how I want to be presented and if I want to gain weight or not. But the only person that's going to gain the weight at the end of the day is me and me myself. For me, it's calories in. So I just want to point out, um, whenever you're trying to make an argument, if you're trying to persuade somebody of your opinion, it's very difficult to do that when you keep... <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, my God. I almost died. Um, it's very difficult to do that when you consistently say I, I, me, me. Um, if you've ever find yourself persuaded, you'll probably notice. Or if you're ever watching a very good debater, you'll notice that they don't almost ever bring themselves up unless they're trying to connect with the audience or, you know, make a joke. Um, it just dilutes the argument. So I think, you know. Everything he said might be true, but when you keep bringing yourself up, it makes it very hard to persuade other people because it's, I don't know what exactly that is, but when you internalize instead of externalize, and the other guy right before him, you'll notice, said something similar, but he didn't keep bringing himself up. He, he had a nuanced perspective that didn't involve himself. It was just things that he's observed. And so it's much more powerful when you don't just use yourself constantly when you're arguing it's a quick tip if you're ever trying to win a uh, verbal battle calories out go to the gym you'll get buff don't go to the gym you won't get buff <laughs> i understand that there's genetics that could cause you to want to eat more but even with the genetics that cause you to want to eat more the same solution is calories in calories out i think the, the whole choice is you know it's always determined on who they are and it's not going to just be a thing done overnight. Yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of, uh, I think it's like breaking the barrier and breaking a lot of things, not only your body, but also breaking your mental state. Sure. And again, that depends on who you are and what you want to go through. I don't know about breaking your mental. I think maybe what he's trying to say is like when you, when you, there's a moment you realize you have a lot more control than you may otherwise have believed in the past. And that can kind of, that can be kind of uh, intimidating because you realize like, oh, I actually can, can change this situation. I have a lot of control and that puts a lot of responsibility on the individual. So I think there is some truth to what he's saying. Just worded it in kind of a strange way. Disagreeers? Disagreeers. Ooh. I feel like... So based on, uh, I'm just going to make a quick call. The lady in the yellow, I feel she's probably not going to say anything. The lady in the green will say some things. And the cane lady, she's going to be the bulk of the video. As a toddler, this is just I body language one on one. I grew up in a very like poor home. She's not going to so say anything. where my mom couldn't provide the meals that she could healthily. So when we would get like free meals, even then it would be like canned food and it would be like very much food that's not as edible. It was food for us, yes, but then I felt like once it reached a point where I was old enough to try to make my own choices, I made all of the wrong choices. I wasn't eating, and I was only eating like grapes and lettuce, and that was mainly because I was in a sport, and that sport just worked me out so hard. And it was to the point where I just was scared to eat. I, I didn't like it. I would only drink water. When you I were was, eating grapes and lettuce, were you thin? I was as thin as I could be. Were you still big, I though? Not, I was still big, but that was the skinniest I've ever been. And that's coming from somebody who was only eating somewhat salads that are just fruit and lettuce and water and maybe ice right before a practice. Do you think that right now you would not be capable? Okay, so only eating grapes and lettuce. I don't want to say I don't believe her, but... You must have been eating a lot of grapes and lettuce if you were still big. Based on what she said, she didn't want to say, yeah, I was still big. She said she was as thin as she could be. Again, this is going to come down to if you believe in determinism or free will. If you believe in determinism, then you're going to say, yeah, she was, she was as thin as she could be in that scenario because she has the brain she has and she can't control her environment and you know that that's one perspective to have but if you're talking like theoretically 
I was as thin as I could be. As thin as you can be is like on the brink of starvation and death. Like if you, as thin as you can be is terrifying. That's not, nobody ever wants to see or look at someone as thin as they can be. So I think it depends on how you look at it. She's not necessarily lying or being untruthful. It just depends on how you see it, which is the thing that's cool about these middle grounds is you can see the way people think and the way they kind of internally philosophize, if that's even a word, you get to kind of open their brain up and see how they view the world. And the way she views the world is somewhat deterministic. And everything she said about her childhood is very sad. And again, that's kind of exactly what I was saying earlier. When you grow up, you don't really have that much control over it. Well, you almost have zero control over your environment. And so I think that negatively affected her. And yeah, but I, the whole thing, just eating grapes and lettuce. Were, were you putting dressing on the salad? Because you can, you could, you could probably get a thousand calories of ranch dressing on top of your salad, and you could be eating twenty five, twenty eight, three thousand calories worth of salad where you have lettuce and grapes, and then you just drench it with. So yeah, I don't, I don't know about the grapes and lettuce thing, but interesting. I possibly would be capable of becoming a thin woman, but since I was young, I was supposed to get blood tested probably when I was very, very young, and I never did. And they had mentioned that it could have been because of my weight and how that connects with my thyroid. I never made the connection, and I never had like that. See the posture. Like leaning parent to be like, go and get checked out, go and do everything's this. Like, imposter. Your weight is probably not your fault. It was always like mm -hmm. your weight is your fault, so that's your mm -hmm. issue. I mean, I mm -hmm. also struggle with you know, thyroid and my own anything. blood issues. I'm not quite sure, but I do see an endocrinologist and I go see a doctor. It what is it with everybody nowadays struggling with their thyroid? It's a choice to do the requisite steps. It's a choice to go grocery shopping instead of going to fast food when it's easy. It's a choice when you're grocery shopping to go to the outer aisles and like not go in to the bread section and not go into the junk food section. These are all choices. As a disabled woman, I can't do a lot of the things that people say calories in, calories So the woman in the red, the conservative woman in the bread, I'm making an assumption here. It's funny because I can kind of, I know, because I, I think I get similar feed on my socials as her because I know what she's, <laughs> everything she mentioned about going, staying away from the inside aisle and not eating fast food. All of those things are true, but you can technically go and eat food from the inside aisle and eat fast food and not be overweight. You can also do that and be overweight. Um, and what she said about calories in, calories out, for almost everybody, that is true. But basically for everybody, that is true. It's, it's thermodynamics, it's science, it's calories in, calories out, it's an energy balance, you, you can't really argue that at this point. The environmental factors and how much control we have and do we have the free will to make decisions or are we born with the brain and the body we have, that's all arguable. But calories in, calories out is pretty much not arguable. And though you know she's mentioning like these habits you can do to make it easier to not get fat, at the end of the day, you can shop on the outside aisle and avoid fast food and still become morbidly obese so calories out oh you gotta go work out and exert it a lot of the things that are typical oh this is how you lose weight put me in the hospital i have to navigate weight differently i have to look at it differently my mm -hmm. weight is the way it is because of medication because doctors put me in this position and i had to learn okay am i going to be so hateful of my own body that i am going to backlash and put myself she through looks scared. extreme gym nights through keeping myself black. from eating things that I should be able to eat. You should be able to have a... Why did they put her in such a... I, I know she's taller than the girl right there, but why did they put her in such a tall chair? Like, they should have evened that out somehow. I, I feel bad for the girl with the black beanie on, because what, what would you do in that scenario? You... Balance. You should be able to go into the junk food aisle like other skinny people do and still not have to worry about gaining 20 pounds. But I don't think skinny Ooh. people go into people? this junk food aisle. They I think certainly yes, do. They do. They eat a lot of junk food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
Yeah. I mean, my DoorDash would tell you otherwise. (laughs) There's a thing called set points. There's a ton of research on it. Okay, just to pause, and this is going to be a two-hour-long video. They're right. The the people who are disagreeers are right. Like, you can 100% be skinny and eat junk food. It just depends on how much of the junk food you're eating and how often you're eating it. But I know people who, like me personally, and again, this isn't going to be a strong argument, me, me, I, I. If I, you know, don't track what I'm eating, if I were just to eat whatever I wanted to, I'd eat a decent amount of junk food and I would start losing weight immediately because I don't have a very big appetite and I don't pay attention to meals the way I should. I can. It's very easy for me to forget what time it is and to miss you know, lunch or you skip breakfast. So you can 100% eat junk food and be skinny. So the disagreeers are correct here. And you do see, you know, a lot of skinny people who eat junk food, but that doesn't necessarily mean that if you're not skinny, you should be eating junk food if you want to lose weight. But it doesn't sound like the disagreeers even want to lose weight. Maybe I'm wrong here, but it sounds like they're just kind of already set in, in terms of their opinion they've already decided that it's out of their control which is a very dangerous game to be playing especially when it is an energy balance it's not like you know they don't they're not happy with their skeletal structure right so those two things are very different you can't as far as i know unless you get that crazy surgery where they break your bone your shin bone they cut it and then they put the wrench in there you can't change your skeletal structure but you do have a massive amount of control over the amount of fat you have on your body scientifically it's not my opinion that your body likes to be at specific weights it likes to be in a specific way so if you are fighting yourself to lose weight by not eating over exercising and you are damn near killing yourself to be at a specific weight Body's unhappy. It's important to note, note that. All right, again, there's like nuggets of truth in what every single person is saying, which is what makes this interesting. And this is why I don't like arguing about who's right and who's wrong. I like to try to find like how do these people come to these conclusions? That's just more interesting to me than like trying to dunk on the disagreeers or the agreeers and trying to say they're right, they're wrong, because it's not that black and white. So she said basically like, oh, you, she mentioned, okay, she mentioned a few things. She mentioned killing yourself trying to get to a different weight. Whenever you're trying to change anything, pretty much anything about your body, especially weight, that is going to increase overall stress. So when you start not eating and losing fat, your cortisol generally is going to increase and you're putting stress on your body. That's your body. She's right. Your body doesn't want to lose fat because it's. It's a sign, I don't want to get scientific because I'm not a scientist, but your body, generally speaking, is going to be stressed out when you try to lose fat. So that is true. But this idea of like you have a set point that your body wants to be at, I don't know where that is coming from. I have not seen the science saying that, hey, like my body wants to be 400 pounds. So unless I'm not, whenever I'm not 400 pounds, my body's going to be freaking out. I don't think that's true. I think your body does have, again, it's your body's an energy balance. So you can change based on how heavy you are and how that weight is made up based on if it's muscle, fat, um, lean mass, you know, you can, you can manipulate those things and that will dictate how many calories you'd have to eat to maintain that current weight that you're at. So if I gain 20 pounds, then in order to stay 20 pounds, I would have to eat more food than I currently eat on average right now. And anything below that, I'm going to start losing weight. And that's going to put a certain level of stress on my body. That doesn't mean that it's healthy for me to stay 20 pounds heavier. I don't know where that's coming from. So I think what she's saying, there's like a nugget of truth in there that it does stress you out to lose weight. But if you can get your body in a healthy BMI range and maintain that over a long enough period of time, I I don't think any doctor is going to argue that that is not a better route than just staying 
at the higher weight because it is going to induce some level of stress to get down to a lower weight. A choice can be harder for people to make due to conditions in their life, yes. but at the end of the day, it's still a choice. It's kind I of could quiet. say Do I, need to I turn had him food up? addiction. I looked at food when I was stressed and this and that and this, and so it's harder for me to choose it than for someone who has like the perfect lifestyle, who someone who has parents who are giving them this and that and this. But I definitely still acknowledge that it was my choice. At the end of the day, when I go there and I look and I see, hmm, should I order a second hamburger? I'm the one choosing whether or not I order that second hamburger. I'm the one making that choice. This guy is so honest. Oh, he got mad. Oh my God, better help course um that guy's so he's very honest i like that guy like he's 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 uh he's being completely honest and vulnerable saying like listen hey i'm making these decisions i don't want to be where i'm at but it's not anybody else's fault and i think what he said is entirely in my opinion entirely true in my opinion i'm not saying it's objectively true but in my opinion, what he just said, he's, he's, he's speaking the truth. When you have someone who is grown up in this environment where their whole family's athletes and the only thing they have in their house is lean protein and vegetables and healthy grains and they're taught this is how you should eat to fuel, to fuel your body and you need to you know restrict yourself and all those things are developed within them at a young age it's probably going to be a lot easier for that person to just maintain those habits that they already have and maintain the healthy body that they have and the healthy relationship they have with food throughout adulthood because they don't actually have to change anything. I think at the end of the day, what's really difficult is not necessarily losing weight or gaining weight. It's forcing yourself to change your habits. And I think that guy's kind of tuned into that. It's like it's he he's recognizes that it's more difficult for other people or for different people, depending on the situations and circumstances and even like the way that they are uh, born in terms of their hunger. I don't know if you mentioned that, but hunger is really it has a lot to do with what what determines if somebody is overweight or not. Right. The level that you feel hungry and you want to continue eating it's not clear to me we have that much control over that, but that is going to have a massive effect on how, how much someone weighs, right? So let's skip through this better help nonsense. The episode. I would rather be skinny than fat. Ooh. Can the agreeers please step forward? This is how oh AI goodness. optimizes my schedule. So I have a project coming up. So I start by listing the project and then setting. Okay, okay. I was. I think there's a lot of different struggles when it comes to being a bit bigger. And I have a sister Jada, that skinny. Is <laughs> a, she's 400 pounds. Look at that. She struggles a lot. She has lymphedema. She's not skinny. To shower is really, really hard. She's not fat. But I wouldn't so I do describe think her as skinny. for like an overall happy life and like zero struggle, I think I'd rather be skinny. That's the other thing. Like, why would you label her as skinny? Is she saying she'd rather be skinny than fat? Is that what the label meant? Because she's not skinny. Skinny is kind of like a derogatory term. I wouldn't refer to her as skinny. I think that. It is oh, common Maybe in society that's just what, to let's want see if they to be do it with skinny. The guy, I think the average the person sure typically wants to be skinny. I'm actually Imagine surprised say, that his I name see fat more people terrible. come forward on that question. People treat you better. Um, it is what is considered the standard of beauty. Your life expectancy is longer. You tend to be healthier. I'm also really tall. I'm six foot six. Oh so my God. plus size so you're going to refer to the the people who are not overweight as skinny but you're not going to refer you're going to say plus size you should just say small sized for the other people or or make it consistent and put fat kind of wish i uh could just pick a single struggle because uh finding the clothes and things like that when you're bigger both ways can make it really hard so if i was skinnier at least that's one less thing i have to worry about okay. but also i've got uh two kids and a wife, and I'm taking care of them. And as you pointed out, I definitely think that I'm at less health risks if I'm a skinnier person, if I'm a healthier person in that capacity. And I would much rather 
be that so that I could be around for my kids long. This guy, man. If you're a trainer out there, just reach it. This guy's like one step away. You know the before and the after and the transfer. He's like one click away from going complete ape shit and getting into the best shape of his life. I swear. If any of them end up in really good shape, it's gonna be him. Longer. Can the disagreeers please step forward? Just gotta work on his outfit a little bit. With the I'm speaking as someone who actually was a former smaller person. <laughs> And I person. had the most body insecurities when I was small. Okay. I was constantly living in fear of gaining weight and having people tell me, oh, don't, don't gain weight, don't do this, make sure that your weight is the same. And once I finally gained weight, I realized that, first off, life wasn't over. I didn't feel any need to not engage in life the previous way that I had. And the attention that I got was different. But even as a smaller person, hmm. you get negative attention. And yeah, rather from, than from bigger people who are hating on you. Trying to control my body to avoid that negative attention, I would prefer to address the situation as a society, make it more accessible for everybody to where we aren't feeling like I have to be a certain way that's normal in order to be treated like a human being and respected. If I could counter, because I was a bit bigger when I was younger, and that's when I was the most insecure. Oh. I would look in the mirror. I did have family members that were skinny, she but then I had again. a family member that was much bigger. And just the way that I perceived myself, I hated it, and I even became anorexic to like not be big. I don't think skinny always equates to <laughs> exactly. Uh, I am. That transition skinny. was so I'm drastic. Sick. The way that I perceived myself, I hated it. So and warm, I so even became expressive. To like not be big. I don't think skinny always equates to being healthy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I am again. That that is true. Skinny. I'm six five. I'm 140 pounds less He's, than I checked, that's, and I'm that's severely underweight. And I, I know about this on a day to day basis. I've been six three, six four, one sixty five, and I felt pretty thin. So he's. He's definitely on the lower end of BMI. I, you could calculate this with his, with his uh, height. He's probably, from a me medical perspective, underweight. But uh, yeah, again, the lady, the lady with the black beanie, she doesn't speak much. But when she does, she's you know, she actually countered. Now, see, now that she's not sitting next to her, like this, she feels a little more comfortable talking. So, uh, middle ground should kind of take note of that. At least you know. Be fair. That being said, I don't know where I'd want to lean at an appropriate weight level, but I think it's important to understand for some skinny people, it's we're not living a great life by any means, and sometimes yeah, it I feel like on that's always kind of lost in translation when they see someone who's really skinny. I, I guess yeah. it depends on what you mean when you think of the term skinny. Are you thinking of just like an average weight person, or are you thinking? Thank of, you. Are you over now? I'm the average weight for like women in America. Yeah, so. Like, 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 If we're talking about an average, like, I'm going to be the closest. Mm -hmm. If your biggest priority is to be in a smaller body, you need to reassess your priorities. Yeah, not focus on health. Yeah. I don't even... Okay. In the immediate tie between skinniness and health, like you emphasized, there is such a gap between one the research because the research has a I'm huge sure. fat phobic bias in it and there has fat been phobic. research that that's the first that buzzword that we've really during, heard say covid covid and the correlation between obesity they rushed through those studies so fast because in society's mind oh of course a fat person is going to equal someone who's going to get sick faster is going to say it's sick oh. easier it was an easy jump mm -hmm. so they didn't do all of the testing that they were supposed to do they didn't check their bias so and by check. saying the study right. is biased you're saying that the study didn't account for the variable that it's obesity may also take studying, factor it? into it's just that there's so <laughs> many variables in humanity that these pharmaceutical companies can only account for so many during their trial. Right. right now they're arguing. She's Here's another thing. If you're trying to become better at arguing, when someone sets up a premise, 
which the woman in the uh, the woman who described herself as disabled, she set up a premise saying during COVID they didn't do testing to determine if it or they didn't do enough testing to determine whether or not obesity was an actual comorbidity or if it was strongly correlated with a higher negative outcome if you got COVID. Now, if we just pause on that, she is basically now arguing within that premise, sorry, within that premise, why they didn't do enough testing. But I don't even know if that premise is true or not. I'm not saying that it is, maybe it is true, but I think before you start arguing within a premise someone's laid out, you should do some questioning to determine because I guarantee you if she started asking what things did they not test for? How long was the test period in terms of determining if obesity is a comorbidity? What data did they look at? The woman who set up the premise would then have to back her premise up with info or data or something to show that her premise is actually true. I guarantee you a really easy way to win this little back and forth is would have been to do that because I don't think that that woman, even if the premise is true, I don't think she's backing that up with anything. She's just saying, well, they assumed that, you know, it would be a comorbidity. So they just slapped it on there. And they didn't do enough testing. Are you sure? And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're biased. However, you want to talk about bias in studies. Actually, recently we've been doing the opposite. So for instance, a lot of our studies have been based on BMI, and so we've been showing that, oh, fat people aren't necessarily extremely unhealthy if we look at people with Depends a certain BMI. How overweight. However, bodybuilders also have a really high BMI, and so they get counted into no, that like category. So it wasn't until very recently that they equated for that mistake, and it shows, oh my goodness, being fat is actually extremely unhealthy, like way, way more unhealthy than we ever realized. You can't gauge health by yeah. looking at somebody. Really. Yeah. Like, none of my health issues, all of them. Mm. But earlier you said that a lot of uh, skinny people are very unhealthy, which is true. But are you gauging that based on the fact that they're skinny? And also, I don't, uh, again, she's now arguing a premise that the lady in the red dress brought up that I don't know if that's true either. Because I've seen a lot of info. I'm not claiming that this is true, but I've seen some things showing that bodybuilders are also unhealthy because they're putting a, a certain level of stress on their organs being at a higher weight. When you weigh more, that means you have more mass. Whether it's condensed to a smaller area, like muscle is compared to fat, or it's can spread out like how fat is, you still have more tissue, more mass. So your heart, your lungs, your organ, everything has to work harder if you have more mass to supply all of that tissue with nutrients. So she's saying like when you looked at bodybuilders compared to overweight people, that's when we realized how unhealthy being overweight is. I don't know that that's true. And now the lady in the, uh, with the cane is now arguing that premise. It's so much easier to win an argument when you just question the premise, or at least you set up a, a foundation of a reasonable premise, and then you can argue that. But when you argue a premise that's not reasonable, it's very hard to win an argument. So I think the lady with the cane should have countered by saying, what, what studies are you talking about that showed that now that we see bodybuilders, we can tell now that being obese is really, really unhealthy. I don't know what the lady in the red dress is talking about right now at all. Precipitated my weight gain, but I always get assumed, oh, don't you want to be skinny so that you don't have a cane anymore and you don't feel the way you feel? And it's like, no. Cause By the way, I have, I have never seen this video. I, I probably should have mentioned that in the beginning. I say I haven't seen I've wanted to watch this for like months now. I think it's been out for like three, four or five months. I have not watched it. I've been saving it to set up this reaction style studio usually i'm sitting in a, a very comfortable red chair but i haven't i've not seen this ever so this is very this is interesting to me i'm always yeah. gonna feel like this it's gonna happen. Like it's, it's, it's gonna yeah. deteriorate it's gonna like, continue america has P an obesity S. problem do you know what's in your cheap protein oh, powder geez. well here to tell us is all natural fitness athlete paul scar all right 
Let's see what got. The ads bother me as much as they bother you, by the way. Probably more. So this is crazy. So now they're all saying America, America, America has an obesity problem. I wouldn't have expected that. I would have expected for the people who said that um, being fat is not a choice, which generally they're more on the side of it's, it's, it's okay to be obese. It's not necessarily less healthy. You can't judge. And I'm, this is kind of sad because I'm judging all of their opinion based on the woman who like who I predicted is doing most of the, the arguing, which is the woman with the cane. So maybe they don't feel that, but it seems like most of the people in the obesity is not a choice or being fat is not a choice camp are kind of arguing that not only is it not a choice, it's not a problem. Now they're all saying that America has an obesity problem. So I'm wondering how they're reconciling those two opinions. I think it's pretty clear. You look at the weight of the average American, you see how obesity has affected not just children. I mean, the fact that we have more younger and younger people who are looking heavier and heavier. And you, you see that, like, you know, the, the way that weight affects us as a society, and you compare that to how we were in the past. Now, okay. not, not that we should always, you know, we shouldn't compare ourselves to the era of the Great Depression when people just couldn't find food, of course. But but it's, it's funny. In that era, everyone was was thin. So, or... I don't know if that's true, but if, if that is true, based on the data I've seen, it kind of is true. They are thinner than they are now. That would indicate that it is calories in, calories out. It's not a hormonal, thyroidal epidemic, per se. People are heavier now in an unhealthy way, and people have are eating unhealthy. They have, are eating it through unhealthy access to food. They're eating diets high in seed oils. They're eating high in corn syrup. They're, they're doing all this kind of stuff that's not good for them that we didn't used to do. And it's bad. It's not a good thing. It's an epidemic. Okay. It, needs to be, it needs to be quashed in some capacity. There's so much access to just anything. Yeah. Like, it's so crazy these days. And, you know, I'm so surprised that we're actually supporting a lot of this, you know, and there's always people like, you know, like it's fine that we have like three McDonald's like on the same street. <laughs> and it's just like, we don't think that this is adding to the problem. What I think is really sad about that is so many people in America just see the profit in it. I don't want to say I know that these people know the problem, mm. but it's like, how can you not see the problem? They have to see it and just not care. They Again, the people who don't speak as much when they do, so she's basically saying, I think a lot of people are profiting off of a lot of people being unhealthy and overweight. Sounds like an ambiguous take. You have to just be like, well, we're gaining profit. Do you see how much this McDonald's is making? You gain weight, we gain profit. Street. Like, that's just like it's not how it is. That's the co corporations, it's the yeah. medical industry. Mm -hmm. Having a fat country makes us fat. money. It's just that our cities aren't walkable either. Yeah, America yeah. is a country of non-walkable <laughs> That, was, that yeah. is why I, I wavered a little bit because <laughs> I think we have a problem with how to treat obesity. I agree. I think we have a problem with how treat. to make it so that it is not an epidemic. Again, I, I, it's weird to hold both the opinion that it's not a choice and that you have this set point, but then also refer to it as something you should treat and not having good ways of treating it but then also saying it's not a bad thing why would you treat something oh my god why would you treat something that's not a bad thing so i think that i personally think that a lot of times when there's big divides when people disagree there are people the people that are on each side they kind of all agree to some extent but they're choosing to ignore like parts or portions of the, the argument. And they're taking hard stances. Like this woman took the hardest stance, in my opinion, for it's not a choice. You can be healthy. You can't look at somebody and you know judge whether or not they're healthy. But now she's sort of saying that we don't have proper ways of treating it. Why would you treat it if it's not a problem? And then the people on the other side are kind of agreeing now. At least they're head nodding like they are. And they're taking, you know, kind of a, yeah, the corporations are profiting. And I, I don't know. I think they, they all kind of see the truth in each side a little bit more than they're, they're maybe letting on. 
this is a systemic thing, mm -hmm. that we are in a society and in an environment that breeds this. Yes. And we're doing it to Preach. ourselves, we're doing it to our children, and our corporations and our industries are doing it to us, Preach. and they aren't having to take responsibility. And oh my God. encouraging it with media. So. And the yes. mukbangs, I was literally going to bring that up, the mukbangs and like all those videos that just... Yeah, those disgusting... Why, why, do, why do you guys watch that stuff, that shit, that garbage? Who watches that? Mukbangs, but also like Lizzo is it and other big like media. I'm, also, I'm sorry, there's, there's a very there's a difference between the people yeah, oh. who are telling people go out and get fat versus a I Lizzo who's so saying accept me yeah. the way I am. She's, She's not gonna just defend saying Lizzo. accept me the way I am. She's dressing extremely Ooh, scantily clip. clad and then saying if you don't think that it's normal for a morbidly obese person to be wearing a g-string in the middle of public then you're the problem and they're trying to normalize society to yeah. this obese culture which is extremely unhealthy and what is an obese culture be very careful who you pick arguments with look at her posture before you argue with someone you should assess their posture a culture which like Normalized. I'm obese, obesity. and I haven't even heard that. Well, obesity is already normal, so it's. Well, I don't think it should be normalized, and it. Why would and you? It okay. Why would you treat? Why would you want to have healthy ways of treating something that's normal? Unless it's unhealthy. But what's the difference ago. between a obese person, myself, walking around in a g-string or a bathing suit? As so earlier, she said that she was average. Now she's saying she's obese. Now, there is some truth here. And I think people get very tripped up with words sometimes, like average, normal, unhealthy. People tend to think whatever is average or normal is like healthy. That's not true if on average, everyone's unhealthy. It's like, yeah, on average, most marriages end in divorce. That doesn't mean it's healthy or good to have a bunch of relationships failing, right? So when you go to the doctor and you get your stuff back and they say, oh, everything's average, I would actually be very concerned. If you go to like a, uh, if you go to a therapist and they say, yeah, he seems pretty average, seems pretty normal, because normal is, you can kind of switch the, the normal and average are, are kind of synonyms. Like whatever is normal is what's common. So if if you go to the doctor nowadays and they say, yeah, your blood work looks normal. They didn't say healthy. They said normal. I would say, what do you mean by normal? Do you mean average? So these, be, be careful with these words because they can really trip people up, I think. I do almost every day and a skinny person. Like, is it okay that the skinny person is doing that? I don't think so, but that's, I don't think that's that. one of the reasons. Yeah, I, don't yeah. Think I, I get the whole thing public thing. Which is I to say that, that when Lizzo does it is the same as a... Victoria's Secret angel Why is just not the same. Yeah, yeah what's the difference? What's what the you difference? Mean, are you telling me they look, you're telling me it doesn't. I'm not saying they look the same. Well, I mean, listen, I was on the same message. implication. So yeah, if yeah. I walk down the street, oh, I'm a runway model. I'm a print and runway model. I I'm have a, walked oh. down a runway in a thong. So me doing that is shameful, but a skinny model is like okay. I didn't. I don't know if I use <laughs> shameful, Problematic. but I don't think that we as a society should be modeling obesity so, but i'm not modeling obesity i'm modeling the lingerie that obese people need to be able to have availability to buy you heard it here first obese people need lingerie they can, so they've always had the ability. there's an, that's another word people get tripped up want need we don't really need anything it depends on what you mean need to what need to be happy need to survive Need to not die. No. Need to buy. We have not. Lingerie. We to no, no, single no, underwear not. is like almost $20. Yeah. And you go to like any other Walmart, any Target, and like all these underwears aren't special for like 5 to like $20. And all right, stuff. we've well, completely deviated. It does take more fabric <laughs> to make use it. That but it takes more fabric. That would make yards of fabric yeah. for gowns. You, like, is a small a different price than an extra large or a it, large? It is. And, and yeah, we're I, for 3XL shirts, I got to pay more money. I think people view models and Instagram people and Supply all of us who are demand. plus size and proud as 
we're pushing this obese lifestyle. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm pushing the fact that this is what I live in. This is my life. Mm -hmm. And I need other people who feel this way to say, hey, I want to be able to wear clothes that look cute, too. I do think that wherever you are at, again, I, I kind of, I'm going to agree with the, the, the woman with the cane here. I think that wherever you're at, you shouldn't hate yourself or you shouldn't. Well, I, sh I won't say you shouldn't hate yourself. I think wherever you're at, if you hate yourself, it is going to be much more difficult to make decisions that will long term positively affect you. Because to some extent, the difference between, you know, being overweight and being well, the difference between being overweight and affecting ch change in a in a noticeable way or changing habits to get to a point where you're in really, really good shape. Like if you see a trans a transformation video, imagine how difficult it would be to make that transition. If it's not just the way you look, you don't like, but you also just don't like yourself. Because if you don't like yourself, then why would you go through all the hard work to get to a place that's healthier or that you perceive to be healthier that you've just for reasons of vanity want to achieve? So to some extent, yeah, if you, if you, you know, you should be able to care about the way you look and your style, all that stuff no matter where you are, right? I do think there's a problem with obesity in America, okay. but I think it's a first world country problem because it's spread across the globe. Okay. And also, I don't see it as a problem. I do feel like health-wise, people should try to be healthier, but there's no perfect body. There's no perfect person. There's no perfect size. And there's people who are underweight there's a lot of them and then there's a lot of people who are overweight so i i really don't see it as like a problem but just to touch on what you were saying because i am in the fashion industry i wanted to become a fashion designer my dad was one people and they old. buy 10 rolls of fabric for one price so it really doesn't cost that much to make underwear sure but don't you also have to worry about distribution i mean if, if the average person is let's say in, in between small medium large and you're sending clothes out for those, you know you could send out 10,000 of this, 10,000 of that, 10,000 of that. You can't always send out 10,000 3XLs because you're not going to have that many people fitting in the 3XL. Mm. No, because there's somebody who works in marketing and they research that, that um, area. This guy is intelligent. So, yes, there is somebody who works, but the more research they have to do, the more of a research department you need because... On average, if you can count on this many people of these sizes being in each location, you then have to research. Okay, how many? What what are the what are, what what does it look like in this specific area in terms of how many of this piece of clothing in this outlier size, whether it's an extra extra small or an extra extra large, how many of those do we have to make? Because if we just make you know a set amount and we don't do that very specific research, the more detailed your research becomes, the more difficult it is to. Uh, calculate and the the higher the chance you're going to be off so what the guy said is actually um that's why it's harder to find sizes that's why you have to a lot of times if you're an outlier like i wear a shoe size a lot of times that i can't find in the store my foot's i have little baby feet um and so a lot of times what they'll do to fix that problem is instead of putting a weird little small adult size or a giant 22 shack size in the store they'll just have you order it online and sometimes you have to pay for shipping whereas if you could just drive down to the store you don't have to pay for shipping so the guy is actually right a lot of times it is more expensive to buy clothing when you're bigger because a lot of times you have to order it online because the research is tricky I, and i also agree with the lady here i don't think it really has as much to do with the fabric um but these people aren't they they're not dumb. There's a census. So we have a database of what type of people are there. Now, we don't know who's going in there, but we know. I've never put, I don't remember ever filling out census information, but I definitely don't remember putting how much I weigh. Do you have to do that? 
Am I just completely unaware? Know the type of people that live in that area and the type of the people that come and visit the area. So that person is doing their job accordingly and usually large sizes are sold out. Okay, so somebody brought up the food desert earlier. I can't even think of an area that would have... Did someone bring up the food? They must have cut that out. Sorry, can someone explain, like, maybe just for my ignorance, I'm like guessing a food desert, desert is just there's no food anywhere? No, right. it's healthy <laughs> for food. So you can go into certain low-income areas. There's food everywhere. It's just depends on how creatively you're willing to get to acquire it. And you'll see a Starbucks, <laughs> a McDonald's, a Chick-fil-A, but there's no Trader Joe's. A food desert, actually, properly, there isn't any, like, for a long period of driving, there's one gas station and a liquor store. Then you have to drive two more miles to hit the next grocery store. But with the food desert, it's not just that there can be a grocery store there, but if I'm making minimum wage, I'm not going to spend all of my money on what is going to last me two meals versus what's going to last me an entire week. Yes. Or if I'm if, on EBT, yeah. I have specific things that I have to choose to buy versus what I can't buy. Yeah. So I'm born and raised in Colorado. In the outskirts, there's so many small towns that you don't even know that they're there. You, most of them you won't see on a map, but if you're from there, then you'll know, and they all have to drive a decent amount to be able to go to an actual grocery store. But how often are you going grocery shopping? Maybe like once every two weeks? And what's the... Um... What's it with like, oh, it's so much more expensive to eat healthy. Most people who say that, they eat out. Like most people, generally speaking, eat out a lot in the U.S. I don't have the, the statistics, but just based on how many restaurants are everywhere, a lot of people eat out, whether it's fast food or, you know, dine-in. If you buy, like you can buy a bag of rice that will last you six months for like $10. So I don't understand like why, and you could eat rice if you're able to eat rice, which most people are. It, that's a relatively healthy carbohydrate as long as you eat it in moderation. So I don't understand fully where the whole eating healthy is wildly more expensive than eating unhealthy. And also if you're eating high calorie dense food, then you don't need as many calories. So you can eat less, but if you're eating high calorie dense food and you manage to become overweight, then if you want to save money, you wouldn't you just eat less of that? So I don't I don't know exactly where that whole idea is coming from, but I mean, I think normal, it so you have to do a drive My once family, every once a week. So you're making a drive once a week, once every two weeks. This is also the people of drive access to the Yeah, like what if I don't have a car? Okay. I was some like, I don't, don't, I don't, I don't even and if me. you don't have so, so yeah, some people live out in the middle of nowhere in Colorado and don't have cars. They don't have access to cars, so wouldn't those people just die of starvation? Or maybe they have to get, like I said, very creative with how they acquire food. Have, usually these food deserts also have very poor public transportation options. Yeah. Yeah. So like you are left with people who are stranded. Yeah, but then what are they eating at all? Yeah, I don't <laughs> eat crap. No, but how are they this surviving guy. at all? Yeah, how are they managing to become overweight if they don't have a car and they live away from all food? This guy is funny, man. I like this guy. He's smart. But they don't got a car to go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He, he broke the woman with the cane. Look at her. He broke her. He was like, yeah, that is silly. What we're saying is completely silly. But I bet she's going to switch her. See, when I go to those rural she, towns, yeah, she switched those back up real quick. They have chickens and they have animals. Right. And guess what? That's You can get some healthy okay. food out of that. That's that like, you know, healthy. having eggs and protein and things like that. I think I would be healthier if I lived rurally. In fact, my wife right. and I are trying to leave the state so we're not near all the Uber Eats and all the I all that stuff. Of, Uber Eats, which is unbelievably expensive. The problem there was not as significant as, say, in L.A. LA. Mm -hmm. And we talk about, like, food deserts and stuff. The nearest Walmart where I grew up was 45 minutes in any direction. The nearest McDonald's was nowhere near to be seen for a long time. So when I hear these, like, and I, you, you, there could be some evidence there as, like, the obesity problem is very low lift. Were there grocery stores in your small town? Yes. Exactly. Like, like I'm, I, I'm, like, kind of baffled by the <laughs> Thank you. Maybe, yeah, maybe I just too. need to go out there and, like, experience the food deserts, but, like, yeah, show me the on the map. Show me the food desert so I can go check it out. Nowhere, it I bet you I'll find food. food. And actually, and I have to agree, we did have access to healthy and health, food. healthy food too. Very healthy. You can find healthy food at a gas station. I, I, I don't think this is no, it is. big of an issue in my personal opinion. Fat shaming is worse than skinny shaming. Ooh. <sighs>
Oh my goodness. I'm going to turn the gain down or something. If you're a content creator on there we go. This is going to be an... Which one is worse? Ooh. So, I do agree... I grew up skinny, and I can attest, skinny shaming is pretty bad. I'm not going to lie to you. That fat shaming is worse than skinny shaming? Because you feel weak and small. Just overall, entirely, the way that people, like, comment on people's weight... Mm -hmm. Compared to somebody skinny, they... Because if you're big, at the end of the day, at least you, you can still be intimidating. But when you're skinny and small and people are picking on you, I don't know if there's any worse feeling than that. This is my personal opinion, again. Actually, don't comment on somebody skinny. Yeah. They don't think there's something wrong with them. They don't... Like, they'll maybe say, like, oh, you're very thin. Um, do you want to eat a cheeseburger? But that's <laughs> not as bad as telling somebody, you eat 10. Stop. And you don't even know that they're eating 10. Fat shaming is a systemic problem. You're not going to not get a job because you're too skinny. Skinny bodies are praised in our society, whereas fat bodies, like, I don't get it as often as other people, but I get a lot of comments on my Instagram that are saying, like, you're really beautiful, but you would look a lot better if you lost 50, 60 pounds. Something that I always get a lot of comments on is my masculinity as a man mm. because of how skinny I am. It's always something that I've always kind of dealt with. My favorite comment is always I look like a uh, sickly ill Victorian child. Mm. And That's horrible. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh at that. No, no, no. no. I don't, it doesn't bother me as much. <laughs> this idea that skinny people. That guy's funny. I like this guy. Also feel, get, get this Bro, kind of reach comments. out, man. It's just kind of mind blowing. That doesn't mean I'll help you get in shape. We'll get you, know, you in. One side shape, getting man. worse than the other. I think that you're gonna use all those demons, all that thinking, and you're gonna just, just channel it all degrees. at lifting weights, I think we're and eating two chicken. As well. So, there's a difference between fat shaming and fat discrimination. Fat shaming is an aspect of fat discrimination, but some of the things he's you on the ver you can tell he's on the verge of just breaking and becoming an animal. Just the, his mannerisms, he's like right there. Touching on our specifically societal and systemic fat discrimination that goes into our medical system it goes into employment it goes into all of our civil rights but have you ever walked into a hospital i remember wa I re the last time i walked into a hospital i came up to a counter and i kid you not every single person behind the counter was either overweight obese or morbidly obese so are they the ones discriminating against the people who are overweight because everybody is overweight so who's doing the discriminating? A very a small percentage of the people in the US are underweight. You're either a healthy weight or overweight. And there's like a small that's represented literally in this video. There's one guy who's underweight. There's like two people who are average weight, and everyone else, which is about half of all the people sitting down, are overweight or obese. So who's how is how are the giant institutions made up of big people? Just how are you claiming that they're discriminating unless all the people at the top are thin, which could be true. I don't know, but I, I never understood that. It's like you have a society of people who are all a thing and you're claiming that the people who are all a thing are discriminating against the people who are that thing. Why would they be doing that? I, I don't understand. As fat people, that skinny people don't necessarily have that same issue. And but nobody's skinny, though. Where they How many times do you see skinny, skinny people? people? Oh, you look like bones. Oh, flaca. All, like, all of that. Oh. So I watched my cousins go through it. I went through it when I would get too skinny. As people, we are just too scrutinized when it comes to our bodies. We don't let people live. But I think that's like the point you said. Yeah, but how much control do you really have for that? Like, Everybody jokes around and is mean to everybody. So... I think this is a good this is a good time to stop the video. I think we've gotten through most of the I, I don't even have to I've never seen this. But the next question is diet culture has positive effect. Yeah, I'm not interested. So I think at the end of the day, these people definitely have relatively thought out positions. The guy with the Hawaiian shirt on to me has the most thought out positions. Like he thinks a couple levels deeper it seems than everyone else in terms of how he constructs his arguments and his positions. 
The one with the cane is the most aggressive, as I predicted. As I predicted, I think the woman with the, the yellow dress talked like twice. Uh, the red dress lady, they, it seems like they kind of just threw your cookie cutter conservative in there. Um, the woman with the black beanie really opened up once they didn't put her next to the other lady. So it, it was interesting. Let me know what you guys think of these people's opinions um, and of my breakdown of them. Where I stand on this, I really don't. No, because I don't know if we, I'm, see, the, this channel is kind of like me trying to figure out where I stand on a lot of things. So I'm not sure entirely where I stand on this. I think I'm somewhere in the middle, middle ground. I'm in the middle ground. I think that the way we're brought up has a massive effect on where we are in the moment. But what we decide to do with that has a massive effect on the future. And generally speaking, I think the more you can cultivate a spirit of agency, the better you'll end up. And so to me, if you have the position that being fat is not a choice, then you almost have 0% <laughs> chance if you're fat of becoming skinny. But if you are overweight and you believe that being fat is a choice, to me, you have a, a much better chance at figuring it out. So I guess you get to kind of choose where you want to be based on that. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you on the next one. As always, stay safe out there.